Hey there, everybody. Today we're going to cover this procedural data setup in Cinema 4D. Okay, so let's get started. So if you've uh, if you've seen um, some of my previous videos, we've used this technique before, but I'm gonna cover it again. So the first thing we're gonna do is create our control spline. So let's call this control spline. And then what we're gonna do is add three nulls and we'll call them start, mid, and end. And we're gonna use these to create our spline. And we're gonna do that using the tracer object. So let's have our tracer and um, you can see that it automatically added in the nulls, otherwise you just drag them in in the, in the order you want them to be connected in. And then we uh, press connect all elements and uh, here, let's drag them so they're not in the same position. Okay, so now you can see we have a spline that's, that's being generated by the tracer connecting all of these null objects. And so you can see if I move the middle, we have a spline being procedurally generated between these points, right? And we can move these anywhere in, you know, three-dimensional space and they'll they'll be connected and you can add as many as you want in here. So this is a super useful technique for all kinds of um all kinds of effects uh, where you want to have procedural control over a spline like a camera spline where you want to be able to adjust all the individual points um instead of trying to mess with a ma like a manual spline. Uh, so the type we will change to B spline and intermediate points to natural so we can get a, a smooth um, a smooth uh, spline and then you know still adjust our our points as well. And we can close the spline if you want a closed object and it'll you know make a kind of uh, closed object out of the, the points using them as corners. So that's the basis of our, procedural spline and then we're going to create the uh, geometry for the wire using a sweep node um, which gives us a lot of procedural control as well so let's set this to maybe six and drop our tracer object in there so we can see our geometry has now been created for our wire and it follows along with our procedural spline uh, controls and then on the sweep <laughs> itself we have controls built in for scale so we can scale down the um, ends of the wire if you press control you'll add a point so we can add a point in the middle and adjust the handles to wherever uh, wherever we want them to be and uh, you can uh, um, create growth uh, along the wire using the built-in controls here as well and you can't see it with our circle but if we have something like a flower uh, instead, you can see that it will rotate along the um, along the length of the spline as well. So not uh, not something we're going to use, you know, but uh, right now. But if you wanted like a braided wire type thing, this could be a really easy way to you know, go about doing something like that. So let's get rid of that, put our circle back in. And basically we have our, our, our control spline set up for, uh, our data to flow along. So let's, um, now make our data and we're going to use a cloner. Whoops. We're going to use a cloner, multi-instance cubes on the cloner, and let's shrink those down quite a bit. And uh, we want it to use an object. The object we want it to use is a spline. So um, here, let's turn off the, the sweep for now. And you can see it's being cloned along the spline. And if we were to move our, our points, we're just fine with our cloner uh, sticking to that. And... Um, 
if we move the offset control, you can see we can move them along um, along the spline using the offset. So what we're gonna do is first we'll create some more and then we're gonna use some effectors as well to adjust the position of these objects. So first thing we'll do is add a random effector. Let's create another uh, null within this called effectors and Um, and call this um, base base random, and let's reduce the effect of that. Maybe just something like ten. We will have it affect rotation and scale um, as well, or you know you can. Um, Or you can do this in a different um, in a different random effector. So you know whatever whatever you want to to do is it's up to you. So uh, we have that base random effector, and then we're going to set up a an effector field in the middle of the spline as well. So then let's add that in. Call it mid random. And what we're going to do for this one is we're gonna use a field to control that. So you can see um, we're gonna have this uh, happen in the middle of the of the, the flowing data. And so what we're gonna do is uh, click on our fields, go to animation tags and align to spline. And then again, what we'll do is use the tracer object. So you can see it hops to the start because that's the first point of the spline and then it can move along here. So we're gonna put it at 50 so it's it's dead in the middle and then we're gonna change the offset of the of the um, field to make it a little gentler and then what we will do is then we can play with the the settings again in here um, so that we have some you know specific disturbance here in the in the middle if we want to um, but and then, you know, yeah, we can go back and tweak our, you know, our first random effector and, you know, do whatever, whatever we want to. Um, that part's basically just, you know, just up to whatever, you know, whatever kind of look you're going for in terms of how the data should, you know, be flowing along and, you know, what kind of effect you're trying to create. So then on our align to spline, we can just, you know, move this wherever and, uh, we have a field where it's being really disrupted and then you know where it's more organized so that's all cool and then what uh, I also did was create plane effectors or a plane effector to scale them down along the ends because so they're kind of coming in and out of you know this uh, this wire and uh, let's add that in and set it not to affect position but scale uniform scale and set to negative one so it basically is just getting rid of the the clones wherever the plane effector is we will add two spherical fields and then we can do the same thing we did with the middle random field and um, use a line to spline and drag in our tracer and that is uh, you can see now it's set to the end and then same thing with this one we can uh, we can copy that tag and set it to the end. Um, and then on these fields too, we can adjust the offset to have it more subtle. And then we can also hide the fields from view as well as the work plane and the world axis. And so now we can see we have, um, we have our kind of setup of, of some of the, the data along the wire and instead of also instead of using the align to spline here we can we can do something different we could um, go to rigging and use a uh, a constraint tag set to transform and then use the transform um, the position of the start uh, null or any null that we want to use and that will achieve the same thing um, 
as the align to spline. But, you know, I think maybe there's a little bit more flexibility in using the in using the constraint tag because, you know, like what if you're in a situation where you don't have, you know, a spline. So just so you know that these are two methods you can use for keeping this field, you know, in that same location. So that's cool. And uh, let's turn our sweep back on so we have our wire. And in, in, in the animation here, you can see this is not just following the the tracer spline is going around it. So let's set that up as well. Um, what we're going to use is a helix here. And um, we are going to reduce that radius quite a bit, move it over. And we'll make it roughly the same length and maybe give it a couple more turns here. And then, so what we're gonna use to keep it um, flowing along the same, uh, the tracer object is we're gonna use a spline wrap and then drag the tracer into the spline section of that spline wrap. So now you can see our helix is going along uh, our tracer object. And again, let's hide the deformers. So now if we move our our end object or any of our nulls, you can see our, our helix is gonna move right along with it. And you can see there are certain areas where the there's like popping and it kind of breaks a little bit. But I mean, I think that's one of the only limitations of the um, of this setup, you know, in terms of like, just just it kind of breaking a little bit. Um, and maybe there's a way to fix it that I haven't, that I haven't figured out yet, but um, it just seems like there are certain areas where it, it just jumps a little bit. So we just kind of have to deal with that um, and make sure that the spline wrap is set to f uh, fit spline instead of keep length so that it goes along the whole the whole uh, spline object here. Okay, so now we have our helix and we need to set our cloner instead of to not being along the tracer, but to being along the helix. So cool, now we have it um, along the helix instead. And, you know, we can adjust our effectors if we want to have our middle random effect be a little bit less intense. Um, and you can see, so there scaling down here, following the helix going along, we have our wire and everything, and we can adjust, you know, the scale of our wire and whatever on, uh, whatever, you know, controls we want to adjust here. So the next thing is how do we get this to animate? Right. And then we had talked about, you can, you can keyframe the offset here, but that's kind of a lame, a lame way to animate this otherwise procedural um, setup. So what we're gonna do is set something up that's more procedural. So let's go to tags and look for the Espresso tag and we'll drag in the cloner object here. So we have, um, so we have it here to play with. And then what we're gonna do is add the, um, add the, uh, where is it? The offset here. And then we will add a, time node and we can plug. So if we plug this time into the offset, the offset should be driven by just the time from the start of the animation. And you can see it is now it's animated um, without us having to set any keyframes. And then what we're gonna do next is drop a math node. So it's it says math add, which confused me at first. I was like, okay, well, if, if there's math add, I'll look for math multiply, which is what I was looking for. But you just need to set this to multiply or divide, whichever you want. Um, and then we need a constant. So we're gonna multiply the time by a constant value Uh, so that we can scale it basically, right? So let's set this to 0.1. And 
And now you can see we get a much more reasonable flow rate to our data. But um, we want to be able to, you know, not have to open up this silly window here. So let's go to user data, add user data, and call this um, time. Or let's something let's say something more specific, flow rate. And we want this to be float, that's fine. Float slider probably and real. We'll say steps in steps of point one. So this is just the uh, increments that it will that it will move in across the slider and we want to go zero to one and we'll set that default value to, to, to point one. And then uh, we can say okay. So now in our user data, we have this new thing called flow rate, but it's not hooked up to anything. So it's not gonna do anything at this point. So basically what we would need to do, instead of using a constant value here, let's um, drag in our cloner again. And in the outputs of the cloner, go to user data, flow rate, and then plug that in there instead of the constant. So we've just replaced the constant with the flow rate parameter. And now it should be the same. And then we should be able to just increase this from here. Cool. So now we have a control that we built that allows us to dictate the speed of the, of the flow of the data. And if, if you want more fine tuned control, just go back to the user data, manage it and change this from a float slider to just a float where you can put any value you want to or change the increment. Um, however you want to. But this is gonna be fine for us right now um, because I kind of like this speed uh, that it's going right now. And you know, you can use any other, uh, any other tools in the MoGraph you know, um, toolkit to adjust this animation or get some you know, interesting color variation or things like that. But essentially this is the, this is the effect. Um, so we built a procedural spline to um, have our data run across. We swept it using the sweep, which allows us for some additional procedural controls. And then we created a helix object, like a, a, flow, a flow spline uh, around the procedural tracer spline. And we, we spline wrapped it. And then using our cloner, we cloned a bunch of cubes along this helix and then used some random effectors to add some base randomness and then a random field in the middle um, where we can have a kind of disruption of the, of the effect. And we used some uh, procedural controls to be able to move that uh, the placement of that random effector wherever we want to and same thing with our plane uh our plane effector we can um we covered two two ways we can place that um along the along the spline as well so the in this case the aligned spline gives us more flexibility but it's also just good to know that we have the option to use the constraint tag as well and um yeah that's pretty much everything in terms of uh you know making this uh, set up and yeah the final thing we covered was uh, procedural animation using a, a tiny bit of espresso and user data which um, yeah can be can be helpful if you don't want to set keyframes because sometimes that's annoying so that is the whole kind of effect um, we're not going to cover like rendering or anything in this in this uh, video, if that's something that you're interested in, like how to light or render this type of scene, you know, let me know. But this is the base effect, and I hope you've learned some cool techniques. I think there are, is a lot of um, power in proceduralism and trying to keep things adjustable and making your own controls for things. But um, yeah, the uh, procedural spline is one of my favorite uh, my favorite tools in Cinema 40. So just, you know, remember that and save it for rainy day. And thank you for tuning in, and I will catch you in the next video. Bye.